Uh, let's proceed. So it's now time to build a neural network model. Okay, so to build it, you first need to define it here. And after defining, you add your layers. Now with a neural network, we have inputs, hidden, and then output layers. If you check the codes here, there is nothing like an input layer. And this is because Keras allows us to use just heading and then output layers okay for classification so that is why i don't have any inputs layer here and because i don't have an input layer i will still need to make sure that the first hidden layer here has information about the data so the information here is the dimension okay the number of features so that one is here that is what i have here and i also define the number of neurons which are here so here there is no standard uh, number okay some of these architectures uh, the optimum architecture or the best architecture is obtained by experimentation so you always need to experiment and then get the best architecture so uh, these ones i have preset them because i found this um, configuration to uh, give me a good result so that is why i'm using that number here the activation function is really that's a rectified linear unit. There are a number of activation functions available, but ReLU is one of the common ones, and it's it's also it also uh, works um, well in general. Okay, it performs well in general, so that is why I am using that. I add another hidden layer. Okay, so here it's twenty. The number of uh, neurons are twenty. I also use ReLU here. Now I add my output layer. So the output layer here, you need to also define the number of classes. Okay, because you are dealing with a multi class problem, you have to put the exact number of classes here. So in this case, it's five. So that is what I define here. When you come here, I have n classes here. Let me show you. So n classes. is five so that is what i am putting here and then i'm using activation function softmax that is what i'm using here because i'm dealing with a multi-class problem okay now i'll define an optimizer here okay and i also define a learning rate so i'm using this to try to also let you know as uh, some of the parameters that you need to um, add or you may need to also tune or fine tune when building a new architecture so one of them is the learning rates so i have my optimizer and then a learning rate so i now compile the model here using a loss function which is sparse categorical cross entropy and then i also specify my optimizer here so again the loss function here there are a number of them and then it will depend on whether you are dealing with a binary a binary classification or a multi-class classification problem so you need to also look at that and also if you are dealing with a multi-class problem and the kind of encoding you use to also determine the loss function that you need to use so again you need to read about the loss functions available and then look at the one which is appropriate for your work or for your data so take note of that the metrics i'll use sparse categorical accuracy okay so these things you always need to read and then make sure you get the appropriate ones because what you input uh, will determine um, whether the model you have can be trusted or not so you make sure you do reading make sure you experiment make sure you consult and then get the best um, um, parameters to use okay so i'll run this perfect again if you are running the notebook on your pc you may have this error coming up but you can ignore because we are not using the gpu version of tensorflow okay so let's proceed now it's time to face the model to the training data so that one is done here okay so we have our training data we also have our validation data which um, it's used to evaluate the model during the training. Okay, so it's used for evaluation and then tuning. 
perfect i also define a batch size and then the epochs okay the epochs here so the epochs tells us how many times the data is uh, fed through this particular network so take note of that so i will run this particular cell to fit the model to the train data and i also specify a history here so the history here um, keeps records of what is going so that later on we can visualize okay that is why i have this here so i'll run this code okay so let's check it seems keras and tensorflow are still running okay so it seems now they are done i had 200 epochs so i'll check okay so that is done i suppose okay so you can also see um what is happening check the sparse category accuracy which we set and the validation loss so you can see that for the epochs things change you see that the accuracy is changing loss is also changing okay we also have validation also here okay so this here will let you um, see what has happened and that is why we also set the verbos to be one so what we are going to do now is to summarize everything okay and then visualize it so that is what this cell here and this cell here will do for us so we are first going to visualize the um, training and then we are also going to visualize the validation okay i did mention that the validation um, set is used for evaluating the model and also for tuning the model during the training phase and so we need to visualize what is happening so i'll use this to first get the training so let's do it here perfect so this is the model performance so we have training and then validation okay this is for the accuracy the accuracy that we set here so the color scheme here will help you to differentiate okay between these plots so one is for train the blue one is for train and then i think the dark yellow or something like that yeah let me just use the word yellow or orange yeah orange so we have blue for train and then orange for validation so you can see that the accuracy train and then validation uh, they were all improving and then now they remained constant okay and they are all around the same value okay so this is important because this plot here will help you to um, know whether the model is overfitting or not overfitting is something that happens okay it's something that you always have to check for when building a neural network model and so because the values are all similar here uh we see that the model is doing very well and there's no overfitting and that is good news for us let's also check the loss let's run this to check the loss perfect so here we see that the loss also um kinds of it reduces and then it becomes constant okay so this is also good for us because uh, they are all um, around the same value the values are similar that is why we have the lines just closer to each other so this is also good this also lets us know that there is no overfitting and that is what we want perfect so after training uh, you want to do this to visualize and then this will um, let you know at a glance how well your model is performing okay there are other metrics you can use to evaluate the model, but these are things we'll look at in later tutorial.